when I see my name or my brother's slash sister's names getting spun through the media, I refer to all my research about who they are. Their job is to control public perception, all while profiting of disgusting, discussing, discrediting, and disrespecting people's lives for entertainment. I send shots at puppet masters, not the puppets. All puppets do is run around society trying to gain popularity and state opinions. What a life. Shrug emoji. My name is worth billions to those to these media corporations. My brothers and sisters who deal with this know exactly what I mean. When you become free mentally and spiritually, there is not much this twisted racist society can surprise you with. My ancestors left behind all of the wisdom and truth for their agenda to be exposed. When you know exactly who they are, they can't hide from the fifth. A lot of these media corporations make their money by degrading black, African, indigenous community heroes. They thrive off it, off of it, and then sell it back to us by having a hand-selected person or group of people spark controversy about them for the world to see. Just watch all of the people who wake up every day and report about people's lives on TV and social media and then profit off them. Then they justify their jobs by saying they get paid to say how they feel. LOL, it's like these people live in a fantasy. That was a series of tweets by Kyrie Irving. The reason he wasn't playing this year is because he was lied to. He was told that he wouldn't have to get jabbed and he would be fine, but then they switched it up on him and he stood on his principle. But yeah, Kyrie has missed games. He's never played a full season of games and things like that that certain people throw around who we're gonna get to. You can say a lot about Kyrie Irving. You definitely can. But with those series of tweets, one thing you can't call him is a liar. And of course, those tweets garnish the attention of one Stephen A. Smith. We know it's draft day right now. Uh, the NFL draft is about to kick off at the time of recording. And they had first take this morning. And just so they could pop a rating tomorrow, Stephen A. teased everybody and said he addressed the situation, but he didn't go into it. He just said he'll uh, wait until tomorrow because it's draft day, you know, because it's impossible to talk about anything else besides the draft on draft day. Got it. So he said he'll wait to go into it tomorrow to pop a rating. Uh, me personally, I'll just look for it on Twitter because I'm not interested in waking up to hearing that garbage in my ear or my ears. So we'll see what he have to say tomorrow. But one thing that has me rolling at this situation is Stephen A was on first take when he addressed that he'll go into it tomorrow and did exactly what Kyrie Irving tweeted about. Well, I caught on to exactly what he did. You see, once we start talking about not criticizing the person who we see and the people we can't see, that's when they get real defensive. Stephen A. Smith made sure to preference by saying, Molly has nothing to do with this. Uh, the, the great producers have nothing to do with this name and all the people's names. Uh, our bosses, the executives, they have nothing to do with this. Uh, John Skipper and blah, blah, blah. All the people in charge and everything. He made sure to absolve all his masters before he went on to say that he's going to address this to basically tell us to leave them out of it. Kyrie Irving said it in the tweet. I'm not coming after the puppets i'm coming after the masters and they had a, probably an emergency meeting this morning before the show and said steven buddy your friend your, 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 your brother Kyrie irving is calling us out now 
you need to get on television and address this. Make sure to say that we have nothing to do with this. Make sure to say that Molly's innocent and everybody, the producers and the audio guys and everybody's innocent. He did exactly what Kyrie Irving was talking about. Absolve the masters to try to put it all on him as if, he's, as if he's not being controlled on what to say and how to say it. This is the same guy eight years ago or nine years ago that told the truth and got suspended for it, apologized, and they still suspended him. And that right there was the perfect opportunity for him to walk away and do his own thing. Because they showed that in a time of crisis, when the liberals start breathing down your neck and coming at us and coming at you, we do not have your back, Stephen A. Smith. That was the time for him to leave then because that showed that they did not have your back and your best interest. And he's continuing to be that today. It's funny, it's amazing, it's wonderful to see how people are starting to see this and they are so desperate on that extremely sensitive people network they call ESPN. They so desperate to crack ratings because they can see their fall, they can see their decline. He can talk all he want about them being the number one show, but the fact of the matter is people are start, people are seeing straight through the BS. There is no more hiding it. You can go on all day and talk about how nobody tells you what to do and you don't give a damn what people say about you. You gonna say what you wanna say and how you wanna say it, but you ain't fooling nobody no more. You used to. I'm not gonna pretend like I was never a fan of Stephen A. Smith's work. I'm not going to pretend like I didn't religiously walk, wake up every morning before college to watch first take or high school to, to hear what he had to say, he and Skip. I'm not going to pretend like I didn't like the show or love the show and wish one day I could be on the show. And then I start to get older and I start to look and investigate and read more for myself and to see exactly how he and, you know, mainly him and people like him operate. It's like when Michael Wilbon said that Kevin Durant was a knucklehead and how he's better than that, how she, he should know better when Kevin Durant made the point that other people who don't have the jab are playing in New York. So why is it that Kyrie Irving is the one that's being demonized? And he said, and Michael Wilbon said, I expect that from any other knucklehead, but Kevin Durant is like, no, that's that makes perfect sense what he said. You can ignore people like me and the little guys, whatever, however, whatever you want to call us all you want. But common sense is common sense. Why can other people come in New York and work, but Kyrie Irving can't? And Kyrie, Kyrie Black, Kyrie, that clown Stephen A. Smith did exactly what Kyrie Irving was tweeting about. Exactly what he was tweeting about. Forget the puppets. Go straight to the masters. The Bible say we wrestle not with flesh and blood. The only thing that they tell us to be satisfied and happy with is a hashtag or a t-shirt that says Black Lives Matter or Black Lives Matter spray painted on a basketball court or locking arms during the national anthem. Other than that, nothing. Shut up, be happy. That's what they tell us. We over here going through all this, put him and her in office, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in office, and what do we get? What do we get? But you got this guy, Stephen A. Smith, who's just been figured out. You're gonna have to accept the fact, dog, that you've been figured out. You've been figured out. Because they think the people are so stupid that the people can't look into anything for themselves. They think the people can't figure nothing out for themselves. We see you now. You're a puppet. You're the same guy who went on television and trashed the Nigerians when they beat Team USA said nothing about the actual game that was being played, but trashed the fact that you can pronounce their names, that, that your Team USA lost to a bunch of guys whose names you can pronounce. 
dissing these guys for what reason? Couldn't break down the actual game. Damn the fact that Team USA lacked lack guidance and leadership at that point of the uh, exhibitions. We just gonna trash these people because who cares? We talk a good game when these things happen such as George Floyd and how we should all stand together and be united as one. But show us what, tell us, show us your works when the camera's not on you, when you're not on television speaking so eloquently. Show us your works then. Can you truly make a difference? Are you truly allowed to make a difference? I don't know what he gonna go on television and say tomorrow. Quite frankly, I don't care. It won't be anything that'll make me look at Kyrie Irving differently. I, I can personally probably get, I can personally guarantee you that. It won't be anything that'll make me look at Kyrie Irving differently, whatever he's going to say on television tomorrow. So I'll be anticipating the clip on YouTube. Because nobody cares to watch no doggone first take, start their morning by here screaming A. Smith, Stephen A. Snitch, talk a bunch of nonsense, talking in circles, protecting his bosses who don't have his best interests. They're allowed to get on television and say whatever it is they want about us. Whatever it is. And there are no consequences or repercussion. If Stephen A. Smith did not have to apologize to the Asians last year for, for what he said about um, Otani, he would have never apologize, apologized to the Nigerians for what he said about them. Making fun of the names of probably some of his ancestors, making fun of their names as if that's a joke or something. The prime example of a man who's forgotten where he came from. Because he's not, you gotta understand, people like them are not used to being around people like us anymore. They see us, they can't relate like that. They uncomfortable when they're around us now because they've forgotten where they came from. And that's the perfect example laughing at somebody's names when a basketball game just happened because they beat Team USA in a basketball game and you want to make fun of their names. Everybody thought it was funny. Everybody thought it was funny until he made the Otani, until he made the comments about Otani. When he had to apologize for that, he thought to himself, well, I guess I'll give an apology to the Nigerians because I had to apologize to the Asians. So he's going to get on television tomorrow and make a fool of himself by saying something that has nothing to do with what Kyrie Irving talked about. He's going to talk about how in Kyrie's Irving, you know, 11, 10 year career, he's only played 60 games four times. He's missed more games and he's unavailable and he's selfish. Nothing, he's not going to address anything that Kyrie tweeted about. Nothing in those tweets I read to you, he will not address. He will try to keep it at basketball because he feels comfortable there. He can't address the real because the real will expose him. He has to make sure he cover up for the people who pay him. This is the same guy that said he wakes up with two things on his mind how to make his boss's money and how he can get some of it. That tells you everything you need to know about a guy like that. I'm not gonna hold y'all up because I am tired from today. 
and I need to go take a shower. So, I think some basketball games are going on right now. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel, people. Please do that for me. Uh, Philly got three teams trying to close out tonight. Philly trying to take out Toronto. The Suns trying to take out the Pelicans. And the Mavericks trying to take out the Jazz. And tomorrow you got the Grizzlies trying to take out the um, Minnesota Timberwolves. All four teams won't close out. So now I'm just guessing, you know, which one of these games or multiple is going to go to at game seven. I'm just so over the first round. I hate the fact that it takes this long for it to be over with. First two rounds, in my opinion, should be best of five. I don't think it'll ever go back to that. I think it'll always stay best of seven, but it takes entirely too long for the first round to um, conclude. Should be best of five. Put the camera on me because I want everybody to hear me when I say this. Kyrie Irving. In the 11 years he's been in the league. Y'all know Kyrie Irving has never played 482 games. Well, yep, we know. Mm -hmm. We've had our criticisms of him. Kyrie Irving. Ain't been to the conference finals. Ain't been out of the second round since he hit that shot against Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors and those boys in the NBA Finals 2016. Mm -hmm. We're aware of that. We are 100% aware of that. But what do you have to say about the stuff that Kyrie Irving tweeted about you? What do you have to say about him saying that you're a puppet? Nothing. He will not address the real. So don't expect him to. If you're expecting him to address the, address the actual tweets that Kyrie sent out, you're going to be waiting for a minute ready for whatever somebody better tell him i'll be here when the smoke clear and everything settled can't afford the price of fame because it costs too much plus you suck up this lame man you talk too much that's why i'm ready for whatever somebody better tell him i'll be here when the smoke clear and everything settled for real for real for real Stephen a ain't gonna address the real the real the real he gonna talk about Kyrie Irving availability. He gonna talk about nothing that Kyrie Irving tweeted about. If y'all think I was talking about Kyrie then, wait until you hear what I gotta say now. I'm not gonna say it right now. I'm not gonna say it right now. I'm gonna wait till first take tomorrow because we got a proper rating. We got the NFL draft tonight. So I'm gonna wait, but wait until tomorrow because Kyrie, you think I'm scared? Nah, I ain't scared. But wait until tomorrow. First take. Don't miss out. Please watch the show.